how is technology changing business how is technology changing our societies how is technology changing virtually everything and in the midst of all the change how can we future proof our career how can we make sure that when things are changing we are also changing along with the change when the world is shifting we are also shifting ourselves how do we ensure that how do we make sure that we future proof our career so this is what i am going to talk about today and um a quick glance at the emerging technologies which are changing our lives you are students of engineering you are technology students i don't have to talk go and deep into the technologies i'm sure as part of a curriculum you are studying about these technologies or you are probably will be studying if you haven't i'm not going to go deep dive into the technologies but i want to tell you these are the eight technology which are changing our our world artificial intelligence internet of things augmented reality virtual reality automation rpa big data physical and digital integrations 3d printing cloud computing etc are the technologies which are changing our lives the the way we communicate with our friends our family members the way we commute the way we engage with the customers the way we solve business problems the way doctors treat patients the the, the, the way researchers find to research the way um retailers sell products all that has changed today because of this technologies now what changes this technologies have brought about in our societies in our lives what is changing what is really changing in our society before we talk about it let's understand the characteristics of our times the times that we're living in today the days the moments that we are spending today what are the characteristics of our times let's try and understand that the times that we are living in today the most important characteristic in our times today is change is the only constant thing if anything that is constant that is change so change is happening all the time there are ambiguities all around there are ambiguities what should i do what career path should i choose if i am dealing with a business problem and i am i have been offered multiple alternatives which alternative should i pick up there are ambiguities all around which company should i join should i join a join a large multinational company or should i join a startup should i join a medium size company so there are ambiguities complexities all around knowledge is fast becoming obsolete that is exciting that's also challenging so my dear friends what are you studying today in your engineering curriculum is going to become obsolete before even before you graduate from this institution so that's bad news this knowledge is going to become obsolete before you graduate from pmc college of engineering the knowledge that i acquired in my degree i am not using any of that in my job i have picked that knowledge along the way the knowledge that you will need in your career in your profession that knowledge does not even exist today forget about acquiring that knowledge in due course of time you will acquire that only when that knowledge evolves so knowledge is very very quickly becoming obsolete innovation is everywhere everybody today is creative there is innovation that is happening almost every day workplace today is becoming global and virtual today we're not going to work you might be working in bangalore might be working in chennai but your team members could be in mexico brazil spain and china 
The workplace has become global, virtual. The workforce is always on the go. The workforce is mobile. New business models are emerging. New way of doing businesses are emerging. Hierarchical organizational structures are melting down. Organizations are becoming flatter. The way they do business are becoming different. The rules of business are changing. Technology is driving all of this. Technology is transforming our lives. Great news. Technology is also disrupting our life. I am showing you a picture of a factory in China. In this factory, probably our guests are not able to see the picture, but in this factory in China about eight or 10 years ago, 6,000 workers used to work today. Any idea how many workers are working in that factory today? You can, the picture will tell you the truth. About 600 workers. Remaining 5,400 workers have lost their jobs. They're not required. Robos have taken over their jobs. Machines have taken over the, the work that they used to do, including routine mechanical jobs and also to some of the cognitive jobs as well. Artificial intelligence, robotics, RPA, Internet of Things, these technologies have disrupted our lives. They have made our lives exciting. Today at the click of a button on your smartphone, the Uber taxi can be at your doorstep. That's a excitement of the transformation that technology has brought about. It has created new experiences. It has brought in, it has created products and solutions that never existed before. But at the same time, it has led to social stress, unemployment, anxiety, rat race in the industry, competition, uncertainty, ambiguity. So technology has, while it is transforming our lives, at the same time, is also disrupting our lives, throwing our lives off gear, completely out of st st stability. So ladies and gentlemen, we are living through the most exciting, yet most <coughs> challenging times in history. Most exciting, at the same time, most challenging. <coughs> What's the most in underlying theme in everything that's happening today? The most underlying theme is the pace of change is incredibly fast. Change used to happen earlier. All the dignitaries, all of us have seen change in our childhood, but that change was fairly slow. But the change that happens today is absolutely incredibly fast and it's, it's extremely difficult to imagine how fast change can happen. It took billions of years for, chem for physics to take shape. When the earth was created, there was only water. There was, there was no life. It took billions of years for the first life to evolve. It took billions of years for human being to come into existence. So what was the pace of evolution in the past? It took billions of years. At what pace evolution is happening today? You can see the men from computers which were there in the 60s and today we have computing power on our on our palms. So the computing power which existed in mainframe computers which was as big as a building that now exists on your palms, on your smartphone. And that happened in a span of about 40, 50 years. So the pace of change in technology, technological advancement has been incredibly fast. Now can you tell me how many smart, new smartphone models come into the market every week, 
any guess how many new models come into the market can anybody make any guess about 10 or 12 new models of smartphones come to the market every week so that's the pace of evolution that's the pace of change incredibly fast so what are the implications the most important implication would be is going to be dangerous to identify yourself with a job with one job with one career with one employer that's going to be you can still be with one employer but if you identify yourself with one job with one career then you have a problem let's look at a few things uh, as to what's happening in our industry uh, in in the workforce today there's some interesting trends that we see every 3 out of 4 employees in an organization are millennials that's a big change that has started happening already what else is happening at the same time 54% of the workforce across the globe need to reskill themselves in the next 3 years 54% of the workforce across the globe across industries need to reskill themselves this is the world economic forum report which in a very clear clearing call says people just need to reskill themselves to remain relevant people in the mid 40s are all of a sudden becoming jobless with tons and tons and tons of experience behind them all of a sudden becoming jobless and you'll find many of them in our societies today um those of all of a sudden become jobless they don't have a job productivity is increasing but organizations growth has remained flat but organizations are producing more but the workforce is not earning more because there is because of automation robotics artificial intelligence many people are going out of jobs the net income is not growing there is a social struggle there is a stress that we have started seeing in our societies what else is happening while the life expect expect expectancy has risen globally um senior employees have started working in organizations while millennials have started coming in people's retirement age has shifted many have continued to work either in the job or in their own profession or they started their own business but they continue to remain in profession for a longer period than before while people used to grant, uh, retire at the age of 60 they continue working today till the age of 80 or 90 or whatever what else is is, is we have started seeing we have started seeing machines and men working together at the same workplace when i say men i mean both men and women so machines and men have started working together at the same workplace on the same workflow parts of the job are being managed by machines parts of the job are being managed by men or women and machines have posed a real threat to men because men can only work 8 hours a day but machines can work 24 hours a day men can work only 5 days or 6 days in a week but machines can work 7 days a week 365 days a year now the challenge is for the manager because the manager has to manage both machines and men at the same workflow and managers had no clue about managing machines managers knew how to manage people they never managed machines but in the same workflow now they have to manage machines and men they have to allocate work to men as well as to machines so these are interesting developments that we are seeing 
at the workforce today. So that takes us back to the most interesting discussion. Um, how do we really future-proof ourselves? How can the future corporate leaders, all of you are sitting out there, how are you going to future-proof yourself? Because I have already cautioned you that the knowledge that you are gathering in your engineering curriculum will become obsolete even before you graduate. The, the management staff and the honorable principal may not be very happy with my saying this, but that's the, that's the reality. The knowledge is going to become obsolete very, very quickly, even before you graduate from this college. Then how are you going to make yourself future-proof? These are seven ways that you can make yourself future-proof. These are the takeaways for you from my session. If you remember the seven ways, the seven attributes, the seven qualities, the seven steps that you need to take, I can assure you that you don't have to worry about your future in the midst of all the uncertainties, the challenges, the ambiguities and the complexity that exists today. You would be able to swim across, you would be able to deal with this, you really don't have to worry. There's seven ways that you can future-proof your career. The first one, be a problem solver. Look at yourself as a problem solver. Don't look at yourself as a developer, a programmer, an engineer. Don't look at yourself as a manager, as a technical lead. Don't look at your job description. Look at what value proposition that you have that you can solve problems for your organization for your societies, for your neighborhood. Organizations will love you. They would love you. They would like to retain you. They would not like to lose you. Be a problem solver. In your family, in your society, in the college, if you're part of a project, nobody likes the guy who keeps screaming all the time. Whom do you like the most? The person who says, oh, there is a problem, don't worry. We'll solve it. We'll find a we'll find a solution. And as our honorable chief guest was saying, that he had the best students from the best engineering college, the toppers, but they were not problem solvers. They wanted to just sit in front of the computers and then keep working. They did not even go, did not want to go to ground zero where the problem is. Nobody wants them no matter where they come from. They might come from the best colleges, the toppers with the best degree. They're not needed in organizations. Organizations require problem solvers. Develop communication and research skills. Honorable Chief Guest has emphasized the need of communication skills. And especially in the context of our industry today, he has emphasized the need of communication, especially in English language. I don't want to talk more about it. He has really emphasized that, established the need for it extremely well. <coughs> Communication is not just about the ability to influence, the ability to persuade, the ability to make an impact with your, with your words. It's the ability to articulate your thoughts in your words. Develop that skill set and develop research skills. You may not, may not be students of pure science. Engineering is applications, applied science. But all of us, irrespective of the faculty that we belong to, all of us need to develop a research mindset. Research mindset is about the appetite for data, for information, for industry trends. What is happening in the industry? What is happening all around me? Looking at that with a lens of curiosity, with a lens of anxiety, and then looking for solutions. That's a research mindset all of us need to have. To future-proof you, your career, you need to have the research mindset because you need to keep researching what is changing in the industry. What jobs will go away? What new jobs are likely to come? What industry is going to thrive? What industry is going to perish? You need to keep a watch on all of this 
all the time. Develop technology skills and become an early adopter. What do you mean by that? All of you are students of technology. But your learning of technology does not end with your engineering degree. It's only the beginning. Keep sharpening your technology skills. That's important. On the emerging trends, on the emerging technologies which are going to change our businesses and change our business models and industry, become an early adopter. You don't have to be a student of technology to sharpen your skills in technology. Let me share with you one example of a homeopathic doctor who lives in Indore. And he's just a homeopath. Homeopathic doctor may not necessarily earn a lot of money as much as, uh, unless you are probably outstanding or the best. And this doctor was earning a decent income, uh, taking care of his family, uh, good enough to take care of his family, etc. But all of a sudden, he got an idea. He created a Facebook account, and Facebook has a feature called Facebook Messenger. And he used that feature in Facebook, and he offered free prescriptions to his friends, 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 and everybody. He said, if you have a problem, write to me on this Facebook Messenger. I will give a prescription for free. Within no time, within a few months, he created a, a customer base across the globe. There are thousands of patients who reach out to him using Facebook Messenger from across the globe. A homeopathy doctor had no exposure to technology, he used the social media technology to his advantage. He became an early adopter. If another homeopath tries to do that, there is competition. But he became an early adopter. So develop your technology skills and try and become an early adopter. Try and apply those skills. Look for opportunities to apply those technology skills in your job, in your personal life, in the work that you are doing become an early adopter, you would have a head start. Fourth one, develop an independent presence. Develop your own presence. Create your own niche. Create your own brand. How can you do that? By bragging about yourself? By talking about yourself in social media platform? That I was in I was leading this project or I was, I, I was on a Himalayan trekking, etc. That may not really take you far if you brag about yourself. But create an independent presence about yourself without bragging or boasting about yourself. Create your own social media platform, whether it is LinkedIn or any other professional network platform. Create your own blog page. Start writing blogs. Start writing articles, participate in seminars, present white papers, create an independent presence for yourself, a brand for yourself by creating value, by creating value. That is important. In today's world, if you really have to future-proof yourself, you have to create your own brand. That's extremely important. The next one, never romanticize or romance with your industry. Never think that this is the industry that I want to remain forever. Honorable Chief has decided to move from academics to entrepreneurship. There are industries which are simply going away. Amitabh Bachchan decided to move from Bollywood to the idiot box, to the television industry. And he started hosting Kaun Banega Karodpati. Don't be in permanent love with your industry. Be prepared to shift, change, shift gears because if the industry itself is going to go away, where would you remain? It's important that be prepared to shift. And the next one, uh, many of you will not like me for saying this, probably would hate me for saying this. The sixth one is assume that one day will be laid off. One day you'll be given a pink slip. One day your manager will call you and then say you are no longer required in the organization. 
be prepared for that eventuality if you are prepared you know how to deal with it if you are not prepared you are going to be in a state of denial and shock you will not be able to deal with that be prepared be prepared to face the eventuality be prepared that your job may become redundant be prepared that your industry might disappear be prepared that your role may not be required how to deal with that the next one the seventh attribute that i am talking about here is develop multiple specialties and honorable chief guest was talking about the product that they developed for uh, isro required knowledge of mechanical engineering electronics electrical engineering and so on so don't confine yourself or restrict yourself to one branch develop multiple specialties multiple specialization this homeopath doctor chose to understand social media technology and that helped him immensely a doctor today on the operation theater uses sophisticated equipments the doctor today needs to understand technology if the doctor says i know how to do surgery very well is good enough no the doctor also needs to know how to handle this sophisticated complicated complex equipments in the operation theater the engineer who is in charge of those equipments need to understand what the doctor is doing so developing multiple specialties is extremely important the reason why if you look at amitabh bachchan again the example that i gave you if you go back and look at his example i don't know how many of you uh, have watched amitabh bachchan's movies but he started his career as a chocolate boy hero became an angry young man started performing character roles started performing negative roles he started performing roles in television look at the shift that he kept on making many superstars who started their career in the industry about the same time have disappeared none of them most of them are not there today there is one gigantic old man he still survives because he kept on adapting to changing times kept on bringing new specializations to himself and he made himself future proof there can't be better example than than um amitabh bachchan so these are the seven ways um if you keep this in mind i hope some of you have taken note of it or have taken a picture on your smartphone but if you apply this seven attributes follow the seven ways i can assure you that you can make your career future proof you don't have to be the tallest you don't have to be the biggest don't have to be the mightiest you can yet be successful in today's industry if you look at the elephant and the mosquito if you talk about these two creatures who is more powerful the elephant or the mosquito who is more powerful mosquito who has the, the bigger size who has more strength elephant but if the mosquito comes and bites the elephant elephant can't do anything about it so that's what is happening in the industry today the large corporations are struggling the startups which can fly swiftly like mosquitoes can make the lives of these large corporations miserable and they can't do anything about it the big message for all of you my dear friends ladies and gentlemen like the mosquito be swift be agile shift gears be prepared to keep changing yourself and you will make you will future proof yourself as you get ready to take off begin your career and start flying i would like to wish you all the very best thank you very much